Hi everyone, I'm Vicki at Creative Notions. I promised you that we would make a sewing machine mat, so that's what we're going to do today. I'd like to start by telling you what you need to gather together to get ready to sew your mat. So I will also have a PDF available on my website and that you, I will link it below so that you, all you need to do is go and click on it. Um, so I'm just going to show you step by step what we need to do after I read you what you need to get together. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to be looking at my list. You'll need, for your sewing machine mat, you're going to need some fat quarters or some scraps or some fabric of any kind. Um, it would be perfect to use the eight fat quarters that you get in your Creative Notions box if you like that. I would fit, pick favorite colors because you're going to be using it a lot. Um, you'll need some Biani Soft and Stable or some leftover batting works great um, or any kind of a, a good stabilizer or a good um, interfacing would work well. You'll need some a swivel clip with a ring, with a D-ring, a dowel, a half inch and uh, to a quarter inch by 20 inches long. Now this is optional and this is the modification that I made and you'll, I'll explain why I did that. Uh, you'll need a fabric marking pin like a friction pin or chalk. I like to also use chalk or a chalk pencil. Um, cam snaps and you may not know what those are. You can get them at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's but they may not be called cam snaps. You can also look online at camsnaps.com and um, buy many, many colors and the tools that you'll need to apply them. But Velcro would work well if you like working with Velcro or regular snaps, sewing snaps, any kind of a connector. Uh, you'll need some walnut shells, some stuffing like polyester stuffing, either walnut shells or rice for our pin cushion. Uh, you'll need some pins and maybe some wonder clips, uh, possibly a walking foot on your sewing machine. It should help walk through the layers. You'll need your ruler and fusible interfacing. We're going to use quite a bit of that. So I'll list everything that you need on the pattern on the PDF and let's get started. So I've cut out my 18 by 21 inch um, top and backing for the mat itself. And then I've just used some quilt basting spray and sprayed about halfway here. I've also cut my soft and stable and then fold that back and just push it down, press it down. I like to use quilt basting spray because it really holds everything in place very well. It doesn't gum up your ne needle. And then smooth that out. You'll also wanna flip it over and make sure that you've done it on both sides. And it looks like I've already done it, but make sure that everything's good. Uh, do this on a piece of paper or some wax paper or something like that because it's very sticky. And when you get it on your other surfaces, it's not fun. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but I have taken my ruler and started here on the, in the middle from one corner to the other corner and drawn a line with my friction pin. And then I've moved my ruler over every two inches. I put this two inch line here if you can see it, this two inch line right on the line that I drew and then just moved it right over and keeping that line straight and drawn. And I've done that all the way this direction and this direction. And then I turned my ruler around and went from this corner to this corner. After my lines are all drawn, it, you'll see that it's giving me a grid and they look like little diamonds, but it's showing up pretty well. So I'm going to take that to my sewing machine and just sew right on the lines as they're drawn. Go 
all one direction and then turn it and go the other direction. And I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks it's like. It's all sewn and then I've taken it over to the ironing board and pressed all of our uh, marking away. Now I just want to square up the edges just a little bit. Um, I did want to tell you that I used a 3.0 stitch length to make it just a little bit easier to sew. And um, I used my walking foot and that helps too. To, um, helps with all the layers. Okay, so I just cut off a little bit. Okay, now this is the optional part. You can do it or not do it, but I've made a little, I've cut out a two and a half inch strip by 21. And then I've taken the edges and folded it in, oh, a half an inch or so on each end, and then folded each side in half toward the middle, like this, to make a casing. And I want to put that casing about, let's see, 10, 10 inches or so from the front side of my sewing machine mat. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to put a dowel inside here. Okay, I've, I actually shortened this casing just by a little bit so maybe a half an inch or so so that I would have room on the sides to bind it and then I'll just leave this open and after we put the dowel in we'll just whip stitch this closed so oh side note here um, Vanessa Ellis was telling me how her zappy dots make a really nice needle keeper isn't that awesome so I tried it out and it works Okay, so I'm just going to pin this down a little bit and then sew it on my sewing machine. Just sew that casing open, I mean sew it down, and then we'll um, be able to put that dowel in. And the dowel is to help keep this from slipping so that when you fill your pockets full of stuff, it won't be so heavy on the front and keep sliding towards you. So I'll hurry and do that. Now, after this step, you're gonna wanna do your pockets. So what I've done with all the pockets is cut them and then I've put interfacing on one half of it. So I've, I've cut my big pocket, middle pocket, and little pocket, and then I've cut half the width and, and put in the interfacing. And then you can top stitch right across the top if you'd like. And after you do that, I'll show you what goes next. Here we are a few days later. I got taken away and I couldn't get back to it. So let's continue making our mat for our sewing machine. So I've laid out my, my three uh, pockets and I have top stitched along the bottom two. And then on the second one from the top, I've drawn some lines with my friction marker and about, oh, about an inch apart, maybe a little bit more than an inch, inch and a quarter. And then um, with my friction marker, and then I've, I went ahead and sewed right down that line all the way to the bottom. And I tried it out and my pens will fit really well or my markers will fit really well. Now I'm going to put this third pocket back on and I want to go ahead and draw a line here all the way down um, where I've done my last um, for my my last line for my pin and then however far apart you want your pockets to be from here on just sew right on down through all the layers so I'll do that okay this is the tricky part um, this is the top of my mat. This is the back. And then this is the two and a half inch by 21 inch um, piece that I had you fold in half and press. Now, what we're going to do is take your pocket and flip it over and put it underneath your mat like that so that it's right here. Your pocket's facing the table 
and the top of your mat is facing up. And then take the two and a half inch uh, strip and put the raw edge toward the outside. <clears throat> then pan along this outer edge and then just sew, every, sew right through all of the layers, clear across, and then I'll show you what comes next. Um, we're going to be able to hide the raw edges so that nothing is on the back and we don't have to put a binding on it or anything like that. We're able to quilt all of our pieces and then hide them. That's the okay, best part. Okay, so I meant hide the raw edges, not hide the quilted pieces. Okay, I've sewn a quarter of an inch all the way here. Now I'm going to flip my pocket unit back out. And here it is, right here flat. Now take this little two and a half inch piece and flip it over the top and pin it in place and then just sew it down. Um, just, or you could use a decorative stitch right here. That would be kind of fun too. I have a cute flower on my sewing machine so I think I might do that. But this is what the back looks like now. There's no seam, or there's a seam, but there's no raw edges. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, I just sewed down my edge and I, so I went ahead and sewed down this side too. I just thought it would be fun. And then now I'm just, I don't know why, but I ended up with a, an inch and a half extra. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Now I wanna make my binding for this mat. And I'm going to use the method, well, I did use, actually use just one fat quarter and I, I cut it into 21 inch strips, two and a half by 21 inch strips. Then I'm going to flip my mat over and just sew this binding down all the way around and then flip it over to the front and sew it down that way. That's how I like to do my bindings. Uh, especially for a project that's just quick and easy. If I'm doing a, a big quilt that I've worked on for a long time and it's, you know, pieced and everything, I, I sew the binding to the front and then hand stitch it on the back. But this is just a project that's going to be in the sewing room and it's not going to really matter a lot. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew my binding on. So there you go. All done. And you've got your pockets here for whatever you want to put in it. So you've actually only got really two pockets. This one here and this one here. Because this background hooks on is what attaches to the main body. Um, this is where you put your dowel. And then that's what the back looks like. There's no seams. So that's really nice. Shall we make something else to go with it? Okay. First thing, let's do a pin cushion. They're very simple and easy and quick. So you'll get a six, six by six, I believe it is. Could be six and a half. And put your interfacing on it. Fold it in half like that. And sew right across here. And then I'll show you what's next. So at this sewing machine, and it is a six inch square, do a quarter inch seam and so leave a little opening. Whoops. Leave a little opening a um, couple of inches wide so that you can turn it. So you'll have a little opening right here. Then you're going to flatten it out so that your seam is on the top. And you don't have to open the seam, you can if you want to. And do that to both ends, so quarter inch seam. On both ends. And that gives you this. It kind of looks like a little, I don't know, flat thing, envelope or something. Okay, now just kind of stick your finger in there and get a hold of a corner 
and flatten it out something like this. You're going to, you can mark it if you want to, or you can just eyeball it like I usually do. Maybe go in an inch and sew that corner and then trim it off. Then you'll do the same thing to the opposite corner. And then to the other two sides, or the other end. So do the other two corners. Maybe three quarters of an inch. Kind of just eyeball it a little bit or follow the pattern. I'll probably have it written out by the time this comes out. Okay, now you have a little square like this. So you'll turn it right side out, fill it with walnut shells, rice, um, fluff, whatever. You have, I like to have a little bit of weight in mine, and it looks like all my weight's on the top, which it should be on the bottom, but anyway. Okay, just push these corners out with your fingers, and it gives you a nice little square, or rectangle, I'm sorry. Go ahead and fill that with your walnut shells and your batting or your fluff, and then whip stitch it closed here and you end up with just this little cute pin cushion. Um, and the reason I wanted that was because I wanted to make a little box to put it in and this will fit right in here. And it's not as hard as you think it might be, so let's do it together. And then we'll also make this bag for your thread. And this is this just hooks right on, you probably can't see it, but it hooks right on with a snap onto my mat and that way it doesn't fall off because I've knocked it off no less than 10 times I promise so we had to have a way to connect For the it. box um, it's an eight and a half inch square and if you have if you have a ruler that's eight and a half inches that makes it really easy so you just cut out that square use one for your top your out outside and one for your lining. Don't do what I just did, that's really bad. I'm a bad example. Okay, there we go. Now, we need to be able to um, have some corners to make the box stand up. So we want to cut a two inch, two inch square off of here. So I'm gonna take my ruler turn it around actually gonna do it this direction see where you can see it best and then measure just two inches so what I did was I folded do it a little slower I folded my two pieces of fabric in half and then in half again and where all the raw edges are out here I'm going to lay that down and find a two, the two inch corner on my eight and a half inch ruler. And I'm going to lay that eight and a half inch ruler down where the two inches just cover the outer two inches of this, these squares. And I'm going to cut, hopefully it won't move too much. And this is where I don't use, I should be using my round mat. And then you can, you can also just take your scissors to cut the little edges that you can't get with your rotary cutter. Okay, and that gives you this shape right here. And then <clears throat> get some Peltex, or I'm sorry, either Peltex or um, the Biani stabilizer and you're going to to cut it to be the same size so just 
I just use my scissors and cut out the corner squares. And I just made sure it was a little bit bigger. And then I'll just cut all the way around it. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to do is put... Okay, I'm going to flip, flip this over and it looks like my uh, lining or my outside of my bag, I'm not sure which it's going to be yet, is just fine where it's at. So I'm going to sew just a, an eighth of an inch all the way around this just to keep it in place. So let's do that. Okay, now take your corners and fold them in toward each other like this and sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way down. On all four corners. And there you have a box. Okay, now let's take the lining piece and do the same thing. Fold your corners and do your quarter of an inch seam. This is a really fast and easy way to make a box and you can make these for all kinds of things to make them for gifts or to um, maybe make some cookies to make a bigger box and give your cookies away for Christmas or whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this so that the outer fabrics on the outside and the foams on the inside and then your your lining is on the inside just sitting in like this and then we're just going to put a binding around the whole outside and I have this much binding left over from going around the, t the mat itself so I'm going to put my binding on the inside and make sure my edges are lined up and go ahead and bind it like I normally would any other thing and then I'll show you how it turned out. So there's our box. Very easy and quick. It's reversible. You can make it however you want. Um, you can take it over to the ironing board and flatten your your corner your edges so that you've got um, your seams facing in, and then just give it a press, and it will get it will stand up a little bit better for you. And then when you get your pin cushion finished, it should fit right in there without any trouble. And then you've got some room right here for your clips or your screwdriver or an extra pair of snips or whatever you want to put in there. Now let's make the bag. This is a very simple bag as well that is you, we use the soft and stable with and two fabrics and then I have made a tie and hooked a pair of scissors on here so that I can always find them because I lose things a lot really a lot 
So we'll get that together and we'll, I'll show you how to cut it out. These are the pieces that you'll need for your bag. Um, you'll need an outer piece that's 14 wide by eight inches long. And then you'll need your inner piece that's 14 by 10, just a couple inches longer. And then you'll need your inner facing or soft and stable. That's the same size as your outer, which is 14 by eight. Um, then you're going to need a scissor, your scissor fob or your scissor, I don't know what to call it, cord. <laughs> and also take, use your leftover binding. You're going to need about a three and a half inch by two and a half inch piece. And I just cut this off of my leftover binding. Then you'll want to fold your ends in, or not your ends, your sides into the middle, fold it in half, and then sew a seam here and set it aside. That's going to go right here in your bag. You'll also need a D-ring and a clip like this to hook your scissors on. So after you sew this piece right here, you'll put your D-ring in it and then you can just sew it right across here so that you've got it handy to sew in the seam and I'll do that so real quick. So I've gone ahead and sewn my soft and stable to the outside piece of fabric and now I'm going to fold it in half and do a seam down the side and across the bottom. Before I do that I'm going to take my little D-ring down at about two and a half inches on um, on the inside have it pointing toward the inside so it doesn't catch when you sew it and you can use your clips or your scissors or your pins and go ahead and, and pin that and then do your stitching so i told you wrong i told you to sew down this seam here making sure you put your little d-ring in here and then across the bottom which is wrong so i get to use my unsewing tool and take it out across the bottom okay now my unsewing is done. I sewed this this way. Now I want to make it flat and in the middle here and then sew across the bottom this way with the seam on the very top. Next you just turn it right side out and this is your outside of your bag. Poke your little corner seams out and you can see there's my little D-ring ready for my scissor cord. <laughs> okay, now you'll do the same thing with your inside. You're going to sew down this seam and then open it up like I did the other one, like I did this one, and sew across the bottom. Okay, I sewed down the seam and then I actually did the same thing I did on the first one, so I unpicked it. And then I made it right, and I flattened it out and sewed across the bottom. So your inside of your fabric is on the inside. Stick this inside your bag. Just kind of push the corners in like that. And then your lining will come over the top of your bag like this. Make sure it's all even and it looks nice. And then just tuck an edge under, tuck your edge under like this, press it, put some pins in it if you want to, and then just sew around. I'll show you how I do that. So I took the um, table off of my sewing machine and this fits right on here like a sleeve like if I was sewing a sleeve. So I'm going to keep it on my straight stitch and then just take a few stitches at a time, kind of pulling a little bit because it just barely fits over my the arm of my sewing machine. So before you sew, make sure that your seams line up because if they don't, it won't come out lining up. I promise. I just tried it. So, let's try again. I put this over the arm of my sewing machine and I'm just so stitching just an eighth of an inch maybe 
on here and I do I did pin because sometimes things slip and if you pin it's better so I'll get this done Ta-da! there we go all sewn over very simple very easy you can box these corners if you want to I didn't because I didn't really think it made that much difference but that's a personal preference it's up to you okay now we're going to take what's left of our binding and fold the edges in just like we did for the clip fold it in like this press it oops take it over and press it and then sew down the whole length and then um, and then we'll hook it on to our scissor fob or our keychain holder. I don't know what it is, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, hang on one second. The next thing you'll do is take this to your bag that you've made, your thread bag, and hook it through this D-ring. Bring it up and fold it over so that you can't see the raw edges that are on the inside here and then just sew it across right here. And then when you get to the other end, you'll do the same thing with the swivel clip right here, and you'll put it through the swivel clip and then fold it over and sew it down. And then you can attach your snips like this, and then hang this to the side of your sewing machine on a command strip and it's always accessible. If it falls, it can only go so far because of the cord, and so you'll always have it nearby. So I have my mat right here, and then I have my little basket, and I decided that the best thing I could do would be to attach my uh, little thread bag by either using snaps or Velcro. So I decided on cam snaps because that's what I have. And these are so fun and I love them. They just hook right on and they snap on and they're so easy to do. Well, I thought that was good and I thought it could sit right here by my sewing machine, but the bag's not light and so it was top heavy and no matter how much stuff I put in here, I can tell you it flies every time you bump it. So. I've decided to add a cam snap to the, to the bottom of the basket and to the side of the mat. And I'll show you how we do that. So I'm going to take the camera back over to the new mat and show you about the cam snap. These are my cam snaps. I bought this um, container at Harbor Freight because it was just right for me to put my cam snaps in. And I bought many colors. They're, they come in all kinds of colors. And this little container worked really well for me. Um, you'll have caps that have the little pokey end on it. And then you'll have a female end and a male end. And let's see, what color shall we use? Also, there's tools that you'll need and that come with it. There's a, kind of like a little ice pick thing that you use to make a hole. There's screwdrivers, there's caps that fit on, on here. This is your, your tool, your set tool. So I'm just going to move this out of the way and find, let's see, I believe we used pink before. So, oh, there's yellow, we'll use yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna sit this out of the way and I'm going to, you can even get flower. These are flower, flowers, I'm sorry. Um, so we're going to need some of the caps and some male ends and some female ends. Two, three. One, two. Anyway, you'll get the idea. I'll do one or two and then you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, here's our new little basket, and I'm going to want it, let's see if I can get where you can see it. Okay, here's our basket. I'm going to want to place it right here on the edge of our mat. So, let me see if you can see that right here. So I'm going to mark 
you can use a friction pin or whatever pin you want. Turn it over and just do a little mark, a little circle. And I would do two snaps. And then you'll want to see how far away they are on there. But let's do these first. So you're, you'll take your little ice pick tool, make a little hole, as you can see. And then you'll put one of these little flower ends, or you don't have to use a flower one. You can use whatever you want, actually. It goes on the inside. I've done that before, and then I had to take it out right in that hole. Okay. So it comes through like this. Now you're going to use either the male end or the female end. Just make sure you do the same one each time. And then the tricky part is getting it inside this little tool. Your cap will go inside the black part right here. And this is the cap. So, get it all squished in there without letting go. And then you just squeeze it really good. And it, it squishes this, the center down right there. And it's there looks really good. Okay, and we'll do that on the other side. Put your cap in. Now if you prefer to use Velcro, by all means use Velcro because I, I don't personally like it. I get my thread tangled up in the Velcro and it bothers me. It doesn't always seem to work, but these cam snaps are super fun and they're not expensive. Okay, my husband came in for a second and chatted. Okay, so you can see where these snaps are. So just make a little mark with your friction pin. It doesn't even have to be a friction pin, where they are. Now that's where we're going to be putting our next hole. So put your little ice pick tool there. Now your um, Pokey, thing, pokey end goes underneath, or your cap, and comes up through. Now you're going to want to put your female end there. Remember your cap goes against the black. This one, this is a lot easier because you don't have to mess with the fabric. And then give it a squeeze, and it's set. You can get it off there okay we'll do it one more time these are so good for so many projects I really love them they're so handy oops They're easy enough for kids to do, even. Okay. All right. Now that is in place, and then all I have to do is snap these on, and this puppy's not going anywhere. All right. Now we just need to attach the bag to this. So um, using the same method, just go ahead and, and attach it. So there we go. That's what it looks like. The dowel's in place, your cam snaps are on, your little scissors are attached, and everything's all I ready. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial to uh, make our sewing machine mat, and I hope you learned something new. But most of all, I really hope that you want to try something different. Um, it's super easy, it's just a little bit of technique and nothing has to be perfect so just remember do your best have fun fun is the most important thing and i can't wait to see what you make so post it on facebook join our facebook group at creative notions uh, facebook group creative notions group i guess it is and show us what you've made um, 
for those who don't know me, I am Vicki at Creative Notions. My website is creativenotionsquiltshop.com and I have a small online store there. I also do quilting tutorials and I have a monthly subscription box for quilters that I send out every month. So if you're interested in that, you can always check out the website and get the details on that. And check out the testimonials of the people who've, um, who are already subscribed. So far, so good. That's what I always say. All right, thanks for letting me do this tutorial for you, and I hope you learned something. And I'll talk to you all soon again in a new tutorial. Thanks, bye.